Satya Yato Nivayad Vitaratas Charti Swarita Swarat Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyanti at Surayaha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatri Sargo Misha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatri Sargo Misha Damna Srina Sada Nirasta Kuvakam Satyam Param Vimahi Damna Srina Sada Nirasta Kuvakam Satyam Param Vimahi O my Lord Shri Krishna, O Son of Vasudeva O my Lord Shri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva O all pervading personality of Godhead O all pervading I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are uh, placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitra vutra. Paramo nirmatsanam sita. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagate mahamuni krite. Kimba parir ishwara. Sadyohidi aburudhyate tra. Krite bihi susubhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavad the Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God's realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturo galitam falam. Sukumakad amrita dravya samyutam. Pipata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska buvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful man, Ralashimad bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful, although its nectarian juice was already relishful for all. 
including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Vidyantaksto Abhadrani Vidu Nati Srihit Satam to, about, to hear about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. Oh, I'm sorry, to hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures. Or to hear about him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu abhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhakti bhavati naistaki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Avarice. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vijnanam muktasanga sijayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Siyante Jashikarmani Drista Evat Manishwari. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Shimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 11. Yono Jagupa Vana Etiduranta Kritchad Durvasa so rirachitad Ayutagrabhugya. Sakana system upayucha yatas trilokim triptam amamamsta salile vinimagna sangraha Translation During our exile, Durvasamuni, who eats with his 10,000 disciples intrigued with our enemies to put us in, a danger, in dangerous trouble. At that time, he, Lord Krishna, simply by accepting the remnants of food, saved us. By accepting food thus, the assembly of Munis, while bathing in a river, river felt sumptuously fed, and all the three worlds were also satisfied. Purport by his divine grace, you see Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Durvasa Muni, 
A powerful mystic brahmana determined to observe the principles of religion with great vows and under strict austerities. His name is associated with many historical events and it appears that the great mystic could be both easily satisfied and easily annoyed like Lord Shiva. When he was satisfied, he could do tremendous good to the servitor. But if he was dissatisfied, he could bring about the greatest calamity. Kumari Kunti at her father's house used to minister all kinds of services to all great brahmanas. And being satisfied with her good reception, Durvasamuni benedicted her with a power to call any demigod she desired. It is understood that he was a plenary incarnation of Lord Shiva. And thus he could be either easily satisfied or annoyed. He was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. And by Lord Shiva's order, he accepted the priesthood of King Sweta Ketu because of the king's performance of sacrifice for 100 years. Sometimes he used to visit the parliamentary assembly of the heavenly kingdom of Indradev. He could travel in space by his great mystic powers. And it is understood that he traveled a great distance through space, even up to the Vaikuntha planets beyond material space. He traveled all these long distances within one year during his quarrel with King Ambarish, the great devotee and emperor of the world. He had about 10,000 disciples. And wherever he visited, and became a guest of the great king, the great Chetri kings. He used to be accompanied by a number of followers. Once he visited the house of Duryodhana, the enemy cousin of Maharaj Yudhisthira. Duryodhana was intelligent enough to satisfy the Brahmana by all means, and the great Rishi wanted to give some benediction to Duryodhana. Duryodhana knew his mystic powers, and he knew also that the mystic Brahmanas, if dissatisfied, could cause some havoc. And thus he designed to engage the Brahmana to show his wrath upon his enemy cousins, the Pandavas. When the Rishi wanted to award some benediction to Duryodhan, the latter wished that he should visit the house of Maharaj Yudhisthira, who was the eldest and chief amongst all his cousins. But by his request, he would go to him after he finished his meals with his queen. Duryodhana knew that after Draupadi's dinner, it would be impossible for Maharaj Yudhisthira to receive such a large number of Brahmana guests, and thus the Rishi would be annoyed and would create some trouble for his cousin Maharaj Yudhisthira. That was the plan of Duryodhana. Durvasamuni agreed to the proposal and he approached the king in exile according to the plan of Duryodhana after the king and Draupadi had finished their meals. On his arrival at the door of Maharaj Yudhisthira, he was at once well received, and the king requested him to finish his noontime religious rites in the river, for by that time the foodstuff would be prepared. The Rasamuni, along with his large number of disciples, went to take a bath in the river, and Maharaj Yudhisthira was in great anxiety about the guests. As long as Draupadi had not taken her meals, Food could be served to any number of guests, but the Rishi, by the plan of Duryodhana, reached there after Draupadi had finished her meals. When the devotees are put into difficulty, they have an opportunity to recollect the Lord with rapt attention. So Draupadi was thinking of Lord Krishna in that dangerous position, and the all-pervading Lord could at once know the dangerous position of his devotees. He therefore came there on the scene and asked Draupadi to give whatever food she might have in her stock. On her being so requested by the Lord, Draupadi was sorrowful because the Supreme Lord had asked her for some food and she was unable to supply it at that time. She said to the Lord that the, that the mysterious dish which she had received from the sun god could supply any amount of food if she had not taken, if she had not eaten. But on that day, she had already taken her meals, and thus they were in danger. By expressing her difficulties, she began to cry before the Lord, as only a woman would do in such a position. 
The Lord, however, asked Draupadi to bring up the cooking pots to see if there was any particle of food stuff left on Draupadi's doing so, the Lord found some particle of vegetable sticking to the pot. The Lord at once picked it up and ate it. After doing so, the Lord asked Draupadi to call for her guest, the company of Durvasa. Bhima was sent to call them from the river. Bhima said, why are you delaying, sirs? Come on, the food is ready for you. But the Brahmanas, because of Lord Krishna's accepting a little particle of food, felt sumptuously fed even while they were in the water. They thought that Maharaj Yudhisthira must have prepared many valuable dishes for them. And since they were not hungry and could not eat, the king would feel very sorry and so it was better not to go there. Thus they decided to go away. This incident proves that the Lord is the greatest mystic and therefore he is known as Yogeshwara. Another instruction is that every householder must offer food to the Lord, and the result will be that everyone, even a company of guests numbering 10,000, will be satisfied because of the Lord's being satisfied. That is the way of devotional service. Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vastaya Bhutri Simata Bhakti Vinod Swami Tenayu Namaste Sasa Devi Gurmani Chani Nibrise Sasunya Vali Paskati Desatari. So here is a very significant instruction for all devotees. If you satisfy the Lord properly and, and with devotion and love, everyone else will be satisfied. <clears throat> now, what about the demons and the envious people? Well, if you distribute the prasadam that you offer to the Lord, they will also be satisfied. We see that. We serve so many demons uh, with our food truck. And normally they, they're not, they don't have good behavior. But for the most part, I can't say 100%, but for the most part, most of the demons are satisfied when they receive prasadam offered with love and devotion to Krishna, and offered respectfully to the demons. <laughs> and most people are demons in Kali Yuga, but the devotee takes that risk, having full faith in the power of Mahaprasadam that's been offered properly to Krishna, and therefore to help all these demonically possessed persons the meat eaters, the gamblers, the sexual perverts, and the uh, intoxicators. Uh, by taking Mahaprasadam and hearing the holy name of the Lord, they imperceptibly make spiritual advancement, and they can also become pure devotees if they continue associating uh, with respect with the devotees. So Prabhupada says, this incident proves that the Lord is the greatest mystic and therefore he is known as Yogeshwara. Another instruction is that every householder must offer food to the Lord and the result will be that everyone, even a company of guests numbering 10,000, will be satisfied because of the Lord's being satisfied. That is the way of devotional service. Well, we do feed tens of thousands of people, especially in our Ananda Mela. And they all look pretty satisfied. All right. So this is a, and then the other festivals also. In Jan Mastami, we get up to 15,000 people come to this temple. About 12,000 one night and about 3,000 the second night for Srila Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja. So, we see a practical demonstration of what Prabhupada's talking about here. And he says, this is the way of devotional service. A devotional service is a solution to all problems if we engage in it purely and with no other mot motive but to please Lord Krishna and his pure devotee, Srila Prabhupada. 
Are there any questions about this? Yes. Well, we don't know if they all do, but uh, we know that uh, Sanjaya does. He says, Yatra Yoga Swaro Krishna. Last verse of the Sh Bhagavad Gita. So he's, he's referring to Krishna as Yoga Swara. Yeah, but there are other yoga systems, like many uh, different yoga systems. Yes. Well, you have to be careful there because uh, most demigods and many, many demons possess a certain number of yoga cities also. And then the inhabitants of uh, Maharloka also possess a tremendous amount of uh, yoga cities. No, but that's all from Krishna because he's Yogeshwara. Do they recognize that Krishna is the... Well, now, look, for example, Brahma didn't recognize it, and Indra didn't recognize it, but then they were, they were shown. So that's why I say I don't, I don't know for sure if they all recognize it, but if they uh, challenge Krishna, then he shows them that he is the supreme Yogeshwara. But they all possess m m uh, m uh, many of the yoga cities to different degrees, not completely like Krishna. And that's why, you know, you can get baffled when you, uh, like for example, even the yakshas, they're demons that live in, used to live in Mon Mongolia, they had tremendous mystical powers. And they, they come from Krishna. I know that. But you, you asked me, do they recognize if Krishna is the supreme yogasra? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, when they came in touch with uh, Dhruva Maharaj, all, all of Dhruva Maharaj's army freaked out and, and ran away. But Dhruva Maharaj didn't, fr didn't uh, freak out. And he stood his ground and he defeated them. And they had this, then uh, what's his name? Uh, Kuvera had to come and beg him, stop killing all my, my devotees here. Isn't, you don't have to kill them all. He was, he was killing all the yakshas and then, then he was stopped by uh, Kubera. So uh, whether they realize or not, what's important is that, you know, Sanjaya realizes. He said, Yatra Yoga Swaro Krishna, Tat Yatra Parto Dhanurdara, Tatra Sri Vijayo Bhutir Dhruvam Nitir Matir Mama. Wherever there's Krishna, the master of all mystics, so see, master of all mystics, that's Yogeshwara. And wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, there will be certainly there will also certainly be opulence, victory, extraordinary power, and morality does, my opinion. So the fact that Sanjaya recognizes that he is Yogeshwara, that's good enough for us. Whether all the demons recognize it's <laughs> Yogeshwara, we don't know for sure. I mean, they're, they're, but they, they also possess tremendous uh, yogic powers or cities. Yes. And then Pralaya said, the, the same, same. source, yeah. yeah. But they don't, they, they're ignorant of that. Well, that's why I say, I, I can't tell you that they all recognize Krishna. There's an example right there. But Brahma is an example, Indra is an example, so many. Ravana. Ravana, yeah. They all found out the hard way. Haribo. Oh, glory to Sila Prabhupada Kiche. Thank you. <laughs>